We're Palm Alexander, a.k.a. The Living Legend, K-I-L. What other kill but kill, steal, kills, doing this in the zone special from the Rocky Mountains. I am in the friendly confines of 91.5 KUNC with my brother, Michael Lau Jr. How you doing, man? Palm, what's going on, brother? I'm glad you made it out here this weekend, man. It's a pleasure to be here with you and sharing in this moment with you. You have no idea. Well, hey, listen, first of all, this has been a long time in the making you know we we've uh we've been supporting each other for for many of years and um you're one of the reasons why i've been out here you've always gave me great encouragement you know why you was from the east coast being a professor acting voiceover type stuff so you've always was gracious with your time and i tell you man you was one of the main reasons why i'm out here today you know me and byron newbie <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh my, my new business partner um so we out here looking to expand the, the network. And again, thank you for letting us into your home, man. Man, it was a, it's a pleasure. As I told you when we were on the way out here, man, I don't have no problem sharing the wealth. I mean, we all have to eat. We all have to make our living. We all have to buy. We all have to hustle. We have to grind it out. You know how it is for us in this business. We have to constantly do a lot of the back end work to make things happen. And the best feeling in the world, brother, is when it does happen because you have to pay your dues. You have to make sacrifices. You have to do a lot of things you didn't want to do, but... As a result, everything manifests, and here you are. Now you're getting ready to live out your dream, and you say, you know what? It might have been a lot of work, but it was worth it. Yeah, and just think about it. You know, um, we, we were talking our way over here, being from St. Louis, losing two NFL teams, but losing the Should have never happened, by the way. That should have never happened. Yeah, it should have never happened. Um, you know, lo lose a potential expansion team to Jacksonville. Um, now, now we're, I guess we're stuck with um, um, development of football. You know, the UFL. With the UFL, <laughs> <laughs> masquerading. It's still pro the, football, but it's not the NFL. Well, I get what you're saying. It's, 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 a, it's a step down. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not my dad or your dad. You, I mean, I watch the games, but it's not like NFL Sunday football. I get what you're saying. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. No, it's not. And, and again, um, I want to. Uh, Thank everybody that's checking us out right now. Uh, we in the friendly confines at ninety one point five KUNC. I'm saying I'm saying to call this like I've been here before, man. Well, you know what, man? You're a natural. You've been doing this for a long time too, brother. This is nothing unusual. You're just in another state, another part of the country. That's about the only difference about this setup. But this is like cake for you. This is clock. This is like child's play for you, man. <laughs> that's the voice of Michael Lau Jr. He he has joined the In the Zone show. Uh, I know season four, five, and six. And my man moved across the country. Uh, give you a little background. I mean, one of the most versatile people in media. And, you know, Tom Joyner was known as the hardest working man in radio. No, this man is the hardest working man whoa, in radio. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brother, I appreciate I love you for that, brother. Let me tell you, Tom Joyner was the OG. And I actually met Tom Joyner years ago, by the way. So it was kind of fitting that I met the original the, 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 the fly, fly jock, jock the, the fly jock. jock and he came he coined himself the hardest work <laughs> because he was he was all over the place going from city to city but he was passionate like we are about our work and that's what made him so unique in this business because he was devoted to getting that product out there and yeah he did a lot of legwork to make it happen but he became famous as a result of all that doing all, all that work he did the boys you hear this michael Lyle jr he is an industry vet he's kind of us Kind enough to invite us into his home, invite us out to Denver for the Black and Gold game. Listen, the End of Zone Network got credential for that. And we always talked about expanding, right, mm -hmm. and, and yes. never being being complacent or whatnot. And one of my things was in St. Louis, you, you could easily become a one-trick pony, right? Right. And so you got to find other ways to make things work. And, and you and me, we, we both cover hockey. We're, we're probably one of few brothers – <laughs> You're right, because I know that it's a sport that you don't see a lot of us covering, and it's the truth. I mean, you have some broadcasters that cover it, but you know the difference between us and hockey, man. It's it's. Listen, we're not going to sugarcoat this. The truth is what it is. I've covered the Avalanche since I moved out here. I could tell you from experience, I've seen what the media rooms look like at these games. But as I was telling you earlier, it's a testament to us because of what we want to do. It's also breaking down barriers. And also, we're trying to set the, uh, set a, a precedent here that we are actually out of covering these sports. And maybe young brothers and sisters that look like us that see us doing this stuff will be inspired to do the same thing. 
you got to start somewhere, right? Right, right. You listen to the In The Zone show on the road. This special is sponsored by HPG. They say, don't panic. It's organic. They are sponsored. They, they look. They hooked up. Hooked up some of this fresh gear that we got. You know, a hoodie for you. You know, got your complimentary bottle, man. We have. We have. We our sponsor had to come through for. Well, you. big ups to your sponsor because I'm definitely gonna drink some of that this weekend <laughs> and celebrate because y'all in town, especially. You gotta pop open that bubbly now. So to your sponsor, <laughs> big ups, much love. Thank you for that and thanks for that swag too, man. I'm gonna be rocking that this weekend. So, so listen. Uh, I don't want to want to hold you for for too long, but I did want to ask you. You're a vet in this in this industry, just like I am. How important is it being vets, not being gatekeepers? Because we got so much knowledge that we've gained along the way. You've been to a lot of great people. Um, Ashley Baker is one one of the individuals that yep. you uh, mentored that we we follow and definitely would like to work with down the line. Tell, tell some of the listeners the importance about being a gatekeeper or not being a gatekeeper. I've learned that in this business, and I've learned from others who have worked with me to get to where I'm at at this point in my career. You have to be willing to open the door and help others that really want to be a part of this. Now, I say that as there's a vibe you have to have with that, too, because you just can't just let anybody in. They got to have that same approach, that same aggressive approach, the energy, the passion that we have. They want to be a part of this, and we can know that. And we'll know that. It's obvious. I was, you just mentioned I was a college professor for four years. I worked with students that you already knew had that passion, had that go-getter attitude that they wanted They wanted this. So those are the ones who you work closely with. But everybody that has a, a, a passion for it, you know just by their approach to it. And it wouldn't be you having to constantly spoon-feed them. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, I want to do this. They'll, they'll come to you and say, can I be a part of this? And you won't even have to ask them. Their actions... And as we know, we are about action. We are very little of words. And believe me, I'm very little of words. Paul, you know, I don't just sit here and talk a lot of nonsense or jibber jabber. I'm all about the business at the end of the day because the business is what matters the most. Now, if they're about taking care of the business and like they say now, standing on the business, Mm -hmm. then those are the ones that are going to be about the business and they're going to be successful in the business because they are about business, period. Speaking about business, uh, you have covered so many different things um, from Super Bowls, impeachment hearings. You recently covered uh, WrestleMania in Philadelphia. It was, it was probably one of the biggest WrestleManias in recent memory. The Rock made wrestling cool again. Can you tell our listeners oh, a little bit about that? Brother, I'm still on a high from that trip, man. I mean, I couldn't believe my own, my own eyes when I saw that a piece of paper come through the email saying that you're going to WrestleMania. And let me tell you, I was a wrestling fan growing up for many years when it was called WWF. I used to order all the pay-per-views in my household when they had four pay-per-views. When it was SummerSlam, (laughs) WrestleMania, the Royal Rumble, and then the other one was Survivor Series. Now they have a pay-per-view almost every week. But the point I'm making is that, yeah, I took a little break from watching wrestling, but as you just mentioned, The Rock made it cool again. It was good to see him out there. Triple H is now taking over the business. He's made it cool. John Cena, who actually... You know, he was actually out here a couple of times in Denver in, within the last two years be, before uh, I went to Philadelphia to see him. But let me tell you, man, that was such an amazing experience. I mean, the weather wasn't all that great to begin with out there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. I mean, it was still a little nippy at night, at um, the first night, but the second night was better. But just being a part of that crowd and just sitting there and just witnessing all that and being where amongst media that were doing the same thing that I was doing, man, it was like, is this really happening? And then, and then, you, and then you are stones throw away from home. Yeah, because I'm originally born and raised in New Jersey. So Philadelphia, I had relatives that lived in Philadelphia, so I wasn't a stranger to Philadelphia. I knew how to navigate around the city. I actually caught up with some of my colleagues from the NABJ that were in town for the weekend, too. When I posted that I was going, they wanted they immediately reached out to me and said, Mike, are you going to be in town this weekend? Because if you are, we have to catch up. And I did just that. And, (laughs) (laughs) you know, again, man, it was such an amazing experience to be a part of WrestleMania. And let me tell you, it probably won't be the last time I'm there. What I what started the WrestleMania thing for me was that they, as I mentioned, they had two shows out here in Denver within the last year. They had SmackDown here uh, last October. 
uh, the year before the re the previous WrestleMania, they had a show actually out in Denver as well for a part of that Rhodes WrestleMania tour. So that's when I really started to get back into watching wrestling. Now I'm watching it more religiously. Now I'm watching Raw again. I'm watching SmackDown. Um, I'm trying to get more into the wrestle. I, I still don't know who many of these wrestlers are, but I do remember some of the old school ones like The Rock and John Cena and Triple H and and, uh, and um, um, uh, Rey Mysterio and all of them. So I'm still familiar with them. But this new batch, I'm slowly catching on. But it was. It was fun to be a part of that, man. It really was. It was amazing. Well, what what is amazing too, man? The hospitality, man, from from day one. Appreciate you, brother, for for allowing us to come out here in Denver, jam with you, man. And uh, hey, big shouts out too, man, to Michael Lyle Jr., man. He, he's one. He's a real one in the game. We need more like him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, where can people be able to find you at? I'm on social media all the time. I'm at uh, formerly. Twitter called X. I still call it Twitter, by the way. I know. Me too, man. It's me still too. to me. It's still me Twitter. Too. Anyway, Twitter is uh, and Instagram at Lyle Multimedia. It's all one word. Lyle Multimedia on Twitter and Instagram is where you can find me. That's where you'll see most of my work. All right, Michael. Thank you so much. I want to kick a big shout out also to Byron Nuvi, aka Addition by Subtraction. That's called Action. Out with the O and with the Nuvi. He's new to you, right? Right, he's he's new to you, but he's he family to us now. Is what that, he is. He's family. It, now. It, that's that's what it is. <laughs> hey, we're going city to city, state to state, worldwide. Sign off in Colorado. You're listening to In the Zone. This is the network.